Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Hello, Pastor Hill. How are you? It's been a while. I'd like to say good evening to everyone, everyone. Pray that everyone is having a glorious evening today. I want to talk to you. I was praying and meditating this evening. And as I've been doing all week, getting ready for this revival that's coming up and spending some time with the Lord. And uh, hello, Renee. And um, talking with him about, um, as he's been dealing with me concerning a lot and lots and lots of things. Uh, on this travail, and I just wanted to just share this with you. I mean, he's really been opening my eyes up uh, on this about Zion travail. And I don't know whether you have listened to the broadcast I did before about this. Now, When I'm talking about this and the way the Lord gave me when Zion travailed, now remember Zion is the body of Christ. Anyone who is baptized in the Holy Spirit is considered Zion. The word Zion is the place where God dwells. So anyone who have the Holy Spirit is Zion. And the purpose of us having the Holy Spirit is that we become sons of God. And what that means is the Holy Spirit is given into us to manifest in us or to bring us into the image and likeness of God. And if you will remember, if you've been in this as long as I have, then you can remember all uh, the times when you have experienced in your prayer time where you experience what you call travailing and uh, a groaning, a spiritual groaning, a spiritual travailing, what they call it. And we were told that the Spirit were travailing and interceding for us for something that we we're about to go through. And I remember them telling us about that. Uh, uh, it was doing spiritual warfare for us against demons or against a devil or, or something like that. Well, this past week, the Lord has shown me something different. Now, the passage of scriptures that says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, the spiritual wickedness and things that in high places in the church, they, would, they have always referred that to devils and demons. And it really, this week, have shown me that it is not. Now listen to me very carefully when I tell you this. The day you got saved and filled with the Holy Spirit, that salvation and being filled with the Holy Spirit automatically gave you power and authority over the devil. Period. You were the you, you immediately be, you immediately defeated the devil. 
The only reason the devil appears to be defeating you now is because you you don't know that you have that power or that authority over him. And that's the only reason. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Because of church doctrines or because of lack of understanding. If you go back and look at the disciples before they had the Holy Spirit, they were healing and casting out devils. And that was before the Holy Spirit. And all they was using was Jesus' name. And they had power and authority over the devils. And Jesus told them then that they had not seen nothing yet Wait until the power of the Holy Spirit come. And when the Holy Spirit come, that they will have the kingdom. And that once they receive the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of God, that nothing will be impossible unto them. So now that we have the Holy Spirit, which is the kingdom, nothing is impossible. So once you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we have the kingdom of God in us. So automatically we have authority and a power over the devil. So we already got that. So we don't have to worry about that. But what, what we are, where we are defeated at is understanding The, the purpose of the Holy Spirit of bringing us to become manifested sons. And this is where the travailing is coming in. The travailing of the Holy Spirit inside of us is fighting against our flesh to keep us from remaining human so that we can become more spiritual. Y'all ain't... <laughs> See, we are too carnal-minded and not spiritual-minded. And that's what the travailing is. We cannot see the kingdom because we are too carnal. So there's a lot of times when you start travailing, it's not travailing because of spiritual warfare against principalities and demons. You are travailing in the spirit because you are too carnal minded. So you need to be more spiritual minded and not carnal minded. i give you another idea. When you find yourself getting angry, carnal minded, fussing, Getting an attitude with one another. That's carnal minded. You need to go up. Whenever you see the works of the flesh beginning to be more control in your life, this when it's come the time to Travail. Paul speaks about a war in my members, worn against the law of my mind, bringing me into captivity to the law of sin 
and death. And what he's referring to was the flesh and the spirit. This is the war. This is when we need to see that it's time to travail. My enemy is in me. And we don't get that. It's not outside of me. It's in me. And so these three nights of revival that we're going to be doing, we're going to be dealing with um, it's time to travail. Now, I want you to I want you to see this. What the carnal mind don't want us to see is to see what the spirit is trying to get us to see. Now, watch this. Remember what God said before you asked. I will give it to you. Now, when I begin to travail in the spirit realm and begin to be spiritual minded, because I'm spiritual minded and my heart and spirit is kingdom centered, it will cause those things that I need. It will cause the earth to bring it to me. The earth is supposed to minister to me and not me going to the earth looking for it. When God showed me that, man, I was blown away. I just started weeping. When we get in our rightful place, remember, now this is how he showed me this. Remember when Jesus went to the fig tree and the scripture said he was expecting figs and there was none. Because of who he was, that fig tree was supposed to feed him. And it didn't. What did he do? He cursed it. And it instantly dried up to the root. When we get into our rightful place, another example, Jesus sent the disciples on the other side and they went on a boat. And then he came walking to them on the water. The water was supposed to hold him up. This is how the earth is supposed to serve us. When we get in our rightful place. We see how Paul. When he got in his rightful place through travailing in the spirit. What, I knew a man whether in the body out of the body. I cannot tell. Such one was caught up into the third heaven. Why? Because he travailed and found his rightful place in the spirit of who he was as a son of God. In this day and time, we cannot afford to be carnal minded. We are too carnal minded in Every area, or let me put it this way, in too many areas as to be called sons and daughters of God. And really, it's not our fault. It's because we have gotten caught up in the church world or the religious world of how things are supposed to be done to the point that we became more religious in the system of church than getting before God and obeying the spirit 
of God so that we can be found in him. And watch this. And have taken on the spirit of the scribes and the Pharisees and became more religious. And being religious, we have become carnal minded and not spiritual minded. The only way you're going to break this is by fasting and praying so that you will get the courage to break that spirit of carnality. I had to do it. Come aside, come away, fast and pray. Now, after all the things, I've been in this close to 50 years. I've been preaching since I was 18. God have used me. Uh, I've seen the dead raised. I've seen God create limbs. I've seen God do many mighty, mighty, mighty miracles. I've traveled overseas, uh, all over, everywhere. I travel a lot. I established churches, planted churches everywhere. Over 50 some churches I planted and still come down to within the last 15 years to realize I'm doing all these things that still that if I had a died I still would have busted hell wide open because I was still carnal minded and religious. We have to get to the place where we are spiritual minded. Works do not save us. Preaching good sermons do not save us. God is not looking for a person who have done a whole lot of things. He's looking for sons. He's looking for those who are changed into his image and into his likeness. And that only come by prayer and fasting and then submitting ourselves to what the Spirit is saying and doing and becoming to the image and that likeness. As I shared before in previous broadcasts that I've done, God help me. In 2015, in May of 2015, I died on the operating table. I had an allergic reaction to the, medicine, to the anesthesia that they gave me, and I died. And they brought me back to life. I was in Virginia, and I had surgery, and I had allergic reaction, and I died. And they brought me back to life. October of the same year, Jesus came to my bedside and took me out of my body. And I stood before the judgment seat. And he told me that he did not know me. And I went to the lake of fire. And I stood over and I looked at all those preachers and apostles and bishops as they was down in that lake of fire. And they were still preaching. They was casting out devils. They was laying on their hands and they was doing the work of ministry and everything and prophesying. And there were two angels. And I'm going to keep repeating this until somebody get it. And there were two angels on my side, on my left and on my right side. I turned to the one on my right and I said, why are they still doing ministry? They have missed God. 
And this is what the angel said to me. And it still burns in my brain and in my spirit. They said, because they never grew out of ministry. They never grew up out of ministry. They will continue to do this with no reward. They did not grow up out of ministry. They did not grow up out of ministry. When I stood before the judgment seat, Jesus said to me, many, I told you, many will appear before me. Say, Lord, I did cast out devils. I did this. And he will say unto them, depart from me. I do not know you. Your work was of iniquity. And the reason he said this was because ministry was supposed to be done in parts. We were supposed to, ministry is supposed to cease. As we mature, ministry will cease. Whether there be prophecy, it shall cease. Whether there be tongues, it shall vanish away. We are supposed to grow up into his image and into his likeness. So all these gifts and ministry is supposed to cease as we mature and grow into his image and into his likeness. This is why travailing is so important because it is supposed to produce the image and likeness of Jesus. And then as we grow or as we move throughout in ministry, if we run into someone who needs this, then it will come forth. But as we mature, these things will cease operating in our lives. And this is where understanding will comes into us. Because what happens with us is as we start to grow, these things start operating less in us. And then all of a sudden we feel like Something is wrong. Why am I not prophesying anymore? Why am I not getting the urge to lay hands on anybody? Why am I not getting the urge to do this? Why am I not getting the urge to do that? I feel like I'm not. I'm backsliding. Because you're growing up. And as you mature in him, the gifts and prophecy and all of these will cease. Mm -hmm. And as they cease, you start maturing. And this is when you know that you're growing. The more they're, still, they're operating, that means that you're still there. You're not growing. And this is why we need to travail. I need to travail so I can grow up. Now watch this. The thing that does happen is that you start seeing depthness. In people, you really start seeing where people are. Now, watch the gifts that do operate in a real shop wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, insight of people and where they are. You'll be able to look at people, see where they are, be able to tell them how to get there, and be real with them. With such an understanding that will blow their mind. So instead of all the prophecy and all that stuff, you won't even have, have time to give them all of that. Just point blank, give them the truth. And then most of the time, if they really want God, they'll handle it and they appreciate the place where you're telling them. If they don't want God, they won't be able to do, they, they just go on about their business because they want the prophecy and all the other stuff. Those people who walk with Jesus and the crowds and the multitudes who followed him for the miracles and the bread, the moment he started giving them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, turn. And didn't walk with him. They didn't follow him no more. Because they didn't want the wisdom. 
the knowledge, and the understanding. They only wanted the miracles and the bread. The disciples wanted the teaching, the knowledge, and the understanding. That requires sitting at his feet to be taught. Those who want what's in his heart will sit at his feet and listen. Those who want what's in his hand will turn and walk away because they don't want to sit at his feet. Travail, it's time to travail, will cause you to sit at his feet and get what's in his heart and in his head, not what just in his hands. And I believe God in this hour is pulling out those in the body of Christ and gathering those who are called by his name to gather at his feet. And those who are just interested in what's in his hand, which is his gifts, which is his gifts, he's leaving them alone. And they're going to be left to their own follies. And they're going to be shaken and ain't going to have no power. And so when it's time to travail, and let me give you this before I close. And I, I said this earlier, but I didn't give you the bigger picture. I saw a picture I saw a picture of a man walking and his heart and his mind was warm. And when he opened his mouth with what he need, I saw the earth shake and what he needed just came to him. The earth opened up and gave it to him. Because his heart and his mind was one with the spirit. And then I heard the spirit say, when Zion travail and it becomes one with me, I will command the earth to meet his need. I will command the earth to meet his need. Now watch. And he will never have to ask or beg. He will only think and desire. Because his heart and his mind is one. Right now, You have to get some work and get quiet so your spirit and your mind can be one. But when you get to the place and travail and allow your heart and your mind can be one so you can pray right. See, that's one accord. And right now, your mind and your heart is not on one accord. And that's where the fight is with us. Things are not happening because our spirit and our mind are not on one accord. And that's what we have to do. This revival that's coming up in in March the 5th through the 7th is going to, I'm going to teach you through scripture how to break through and what it means to come to a place of travail and be the Zion that God is calling for. We are Zion. Zion is the place where God dwells. And you have to learn how to break through all the stuff that we have to go through. We got to break through and vomit up all this stuff. I've been through it. I know what it has to take through. 
Ever since 2015, I'm a whole new different person. I have died. I've been resurrected. And now I'm walking in a whole new, different place and different light. We are actually talking about a new birth. We're actually talking about being born again. <laughs> being born again. So we're going to be at Kingdom University, 3704 Airport Circle, here in Wilson, March the 5th through the 7th, 7.30 p.m. nightly. That's a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday night. And um, so if you're not busy, come out and be with us. We're going to be doing some teaching, praying, however God wants to use. If you're a pastor, a uh, preacher, uh, anybody that God uses, I, 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 I ask for your support to come out and to help us pray and, uh, and travail and join us and become one accord with us because I need, I need your support and help to pray. And uh, and there's unity there, and so uh, I input anything that God has given you on this subject and stuff. So I just don't want to be by myself. God has given you revelation in this and praying, and uh, definitely we're gonna be doing a whole lot of praying together so that we can travel and break through together as a body. So. Uh, that's it. I've done, uh, like I said, other uh, topics on this. So you can look on um, on my channel, on my page there, under my videos on Facebook, and other topics that I've done on this as well. I haven't loaded them up on my YouTube channel yet, so they're still on my Facebook page um, that I've done on this. It's time for Zion to travail. So uh, thank you for listening. And um, God be with you all. Thank you. Bye.